You know, you just know when you hear the truth, don't you? Didn't that feel like the truth? No lies there, huh? Huh? I'm doing my talk now. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Okay. <laughs> and so it is. No, good. You should listen, because who knows what I'm going to say. And so it is, and so it shall be, we don't have to justify. God, I love that. Aren't you tired of justifying your life? How about you in the back? <laughs> You're like, I could justify, it's fine. Aren't you just tired of justifying everything? Aren't you just tired of making, making up crap because something happened? <laughs> There's really only one truth. You made it happen. We all caused it to happen. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing. And so it is, and so it shall be. We don't have to justify any more than the lilies of the field or the bird in flight has to bloom or has to fly. They do it because they're called to. They do it because it's what they've come here to be. And the moment you serve your heart is the moment you are free. The moment, isn't that brilliant? Brilliant. The moment you serve your heart is the moment that you are free. So let's just start there. Are you serving your heart in your life? You don't have to answer out loud, but you can. I don't really care. Either way, fine. <laughs> are you serving your heart? Are you listening to your heart? That's one of the first things. Do you listen? Are you hearing what you're thinking? Are you hearing what you feel? Do you know what you feel? Do you know what you're thinking? Are you listening to your heart's desire? Do you even know what your heart's desire is? And if you do, are you honoring what it's saying? And if you don't, what's in the way of you knowing it? There's an awful lot of questions for you to think about. Last week, I talked about being unbound. And I talked about just letting go of everything, everything that we can let go of that stands in our way. Yesterday, we went shopping at the Grove and to, to see Santa. And um, we went to Barnes and & Nobles. And I think it was, it's the four-story Barnes & Nobles. It's really tall and got a lot of, got a, got a lot of floors. <laughs> and so, so we kind of split up somehow. And I ended up in the self-help, psychology, religious section. <laughs> Kevin was somewhere I can't say. And <laughs> the children were probably at Starbucks upstairs. But, but that's where I ended up. And when I got to that area of the, of this, of the uh, Barnes & Nobles, it was packed. There were people sitting on the floor with their backs to the walls. There were people sitting in chairs. There were people standing against pillars, all reading these books, all different books. And I looked up, and here are thousands of self-help books. And I just stood there for a moment. And I thought to myself, what are they all looking for? What are we all looking for? Why are there so many self-help books? Why am I writing them? <laughs> you know, what are we all looking for? And I got it. I thought, I got it. We are looking for the key. All of us are looking for a key to some unlocked part of our being where our true happiness is, where our true authenticity is, where our true prosperity is, where our true creativity is as though there is a key, and as though there's really anything locked up anywhere. And I just stood there for a while. And then I started to look at some of the books, and, and I thought, it's interesting. What books really pop out to me? And it was fascinating. I'm not going to share that with you. But certain books popped off the shelf to me, and I looked at them. But the thought about the key did not leave me. And then I started to ask myself, what's the key of, the religious, of religious science? What's the key? What's the key we offer? We're offering a key. What's our key? Our key is four words. And so it is. That's our key. That's what we teach. Four words. And so it is. The title of my talk today is, And So It Is. Or is it? We are bound by our beliefs, whether they serve us or not. That's the truth. We are bound by our beliefs, whether they serve us or not. So when we say, and so it is, it doesn't matter what that it is, it is. It can be lack, it can be prosperity. 
It can be health. It can be disease. It can be love. It can be fear. It doesn't matter. And so it is. And that's what we teach, the impersonal nature of spirit. We also teach the love of spirit, the love that allows us to say these words. And so it is. Ernest Holmes said, your word is the law unto that which is spoken. Your word is the law unto that with which it is spoken. Raymond Charles Barker in The Power of Decision writes, and this is one of my favorite quotes, and I know many of you have heard it, trouble ensues when an unintelligent factor is introduced into an intelligent universe. Where do you think that unintelligent factor comes from? From Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> it comes from whatever in your mind you have bought into and then allowed yourself to introduce it into this field of intelligence that will always say yes. And so it is, depending on what the it is that you are introducing into this intelligent universe, it comes true. And so it is, or is it? Or is it? You know, I started today by telling you that I really am at this part in my career as a minister where I am really just asking myself daily, what do I need to know? What more is there to know? I am not interested in regurgitating everything I've regurgitated for the first 10 years of my ministry. I am interested in still teaching whatever of that is still valid in my life. And it's not all valid. I am interested in finding out where this teaching has led me now where it's forcing me to expand and then talking about that. And so right now I'm reading The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And I can tell you that this book is revolutionary. This book pushes you and forces you to a place in your mind that we've talked about all these years. I've been talking about it all these years. But this book somehow allows me to stop talking about it and to start actually stepping into it in a way I hadn't before. I thought I had. I really thought I had. And yet this book is saying to me, there is so much more for you to know. And it's so simple in its design. And yet it is so simple in its design that it is really complex. <laughs> and what I love about when I get to teach books like this is that I'm teaching something I don't know. Just like most teachers. <laughs> I am teaching something that I don't know, which makes it so much more fascinating to me. Because it allows me to teach something that's about, about to be known through all of us at the same time. And the questions are more important than the answers. And what it does to me is more important than what's on the page. And where it takes me is more important than any philosophy that could attempt to describe it. The Untethered Soul, it suggests, this book suggests, that we can always step back, even beyond our own consciousness, and tap into the one mind. Now we teach that there's one mind. But what I'm coming to understand is I can actually step into that one mind. I do not have to be bound by my individual mind. I do not have to be stuck in my individual mind believing that there is one mind and I am a part of it and that part is so separate. That's where we become separate so often why we still feel separate when we do. That there is a part, a place where I can back up so far that I am in the one mind and I now know what it means to have an impersonal outlook and an impersonal look at my life. I can actually look at what I'm thinking. Do you ever have those moments in your life where, where you've thought this, you've had this whole experience and then somehow you're able to look at it and just laugh at yourself and go, oh my God, I really said that to her. And she really said that back to me. And now we're not talking. But you're, you're at this place where you're going, wow, look at that. And you actually have a sense of humor about it. That's the one mind. That's the place that if we can get so far back, we can take everything in our life in such an impersonal manner that suddenly we have the power again. And we are not getting our power from stuff out here. And we're also not having our power zapped by anything out here because I'm a, I'm a, I have the ability to remove myself enough to step into the whole. And that's what this book attempts to speak of. So, in that place that you go, nothing's held back. In this one place in mind, should you be able to get there, and I know you can, I do. It's that place where we are truly, absolutely, truly unbound. Religious science teaches two things, and two things only. It teaches the divinity of man, which is what Patrick so beautifully discussed this morning. 
the divinity of man, and it teaches the law of cause and effect. Now, the truth is, if you own the divinity of man, if you really own who you are, the law of cause and effect takes care of itself. It just is. It just does. When I know that I am God, when I know that I am that power, the law of cause and effect just does what it does. And my mind thinks as God. Not thinks of God, not thinks the way God thinks, thinks as God. I come from that power. And then the law of cause and effect takes care of itself. Emerson wrote this. Emerson said, shallow men believe in luck, in circumstance. Strong men believe in cause and effect. So I'm a strong man. And here's another quote I found. When you truly understand karma, then you realize that you are truly responsible for everything in your life. It is incredibly empowering to know that your future is in your own hands. And that quote is by Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Seriously. That's what this man wrote. Deepak Chopra wrote, if you can, realize that a cosmic plan is unfolding and appreciate the incredibly woven tapestry for what it is, a design of unparalleled marvel. That's you. That's what your life is. Your life is a design of unparalleled marvel. Does your life feel like that right now? For some of you, it does. For some of you, maybe you're a little off the mark. For some of you, maybe that seems like something you'd like to have happen to you. But regardless of where you land in that landscape, it's the truth. Your life is a life, a design of unparalleled marvel. So let's look at our philosophy for one second. When you say, and so it is, what exactly are you saying? When you say, and so it is, are you saying that that which I am saying right now I make manifest through the power of my word, and so it is, and so it happens. Yes? Right. That's what we have taught. That's what I have taught up to this point in my life. And so it is means I can take a thought and manifest it based on the intention of my mind. Yes? yes. I know you're all like, well, he's not going to say that next, so I'm just going to stop. Shut up. <laughs> okay. So... Is that what we're teaching? You know, I, I think we may have morphed into that mistakenly, but I don't know that that's what Ernest Holmes meant. I don't know that that's what Jesus meant. And I don't know that Christianity really represents what Jesus taught. And I don't know that religious science really represents what Ernest Holmes taught at this point. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I think much of what we teach is still what Ernest Holmes meant in the beginning. But I do know that Ernest Holmes said, if you're still studying this as gospel in 50 years, you missed the point. You didn't say it that way, but it was something like that. Well, I'm, t I'm done missing the point. Because I think the point is grow. The point is expand. The point is figure it out in a bigger context. So, are you also, when you say, and so it is, are you also saying perhaps that whatever's happened is done, and that's the end of it. It's out of my hands. And so it is, done. I know I've thought that. And so it is, done, complete. And I'm still thinking about that thing that I'm talking about, prosperity, and so it is. I want a new house, and so it is. I want a new car, and so it is. Mama needs a new pair of shoes, and so it is. Did you ever say that? <laughs> you know what, this sounds an awful lot like the religions I came from, to be honest. That we just say, and so it is, and then it happens, and that's it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Or. Or are we possibly saying that and so it is means what Deepak Chopra said, the incredi incredibly woven tapestry for what it is, a design of unparalleled marvel. Are you understanding that it is your wave to ride and no matter what, your life is unfolding perfectly? That's what Deepak Chopra is saying, that your life is yours to live. It is unfolding perfectly every aspect of it, even the stuff that you may think you don't like, is part of this wave that you are riding. And so it is. And that your life is unfolding perfectly and to embrace it as such. I think it's more, more all-encompassing when we look at life that way. So Michael Singer in The Untethered Soul, he said this, and this is a quote that knocked me over. In order to become who you are, you must be willing to let go of who you think you are. In order to become who you are, 
you must be willing to let go of who you think you are. And so it is, the it in that sentence is the who you are. And so it is. And when we identify ourselves as the it in the smaller vein, then what we're doing is we're holding on to something that is so limited in scope. So are you willing to change it up so much so that you're willing to let go of who you think you are? Every person in this room thinks they are someone. I think I'm someone. I know who I think I am. It's scary to let go of that. It's scary to let go of, of, of a concept of myself as a minister. It's scary to let go of myself as, as a singer. It's scary to let go of myself as, as a writer, as a director, as an actor, as a father, as a husband. It's scary for me to let go of all of that. I'm sure every one of you has things in your life that you do not want to let go of. It's scary for Randy Furman to let go of himself as a chef. It's, it's scary of Suzanne Benoit to let go of herself as Gomer Pyle's girlfriend. <laughs> I knew I'd get that in there someday in some talk. It's scary to let go of ourselves as who we are. You'll be hearing about that later, I'm sure. It is. And yet, that's what this philosophy, that's what this teaching can give us. That's the gift. It can actually say to us, there's nothing to be afraid of. Back up from everything you think you are, and you will find out who you really are. Stand back from everything you think you know, and you will find out what there is to know. And so it is, is a declaration of God always at work in our lives, which leads to the spiritual truth that life is unfolding perfectly. Back to my title, and so it is, or is it? Here's the deal. And so it is, is our philosophy. It's what we teach. But we need to get back to what we're teaching it and how we're teaching it. And so it is, it is God. It is perfection. It is prosperity, health, good. It is all that. And it's what I am. So every time I say, and so it is, and relegate it to some little thing that I'm trying to demonstrate, misses the point. But if every time I say, and so it is, I recognize, and so it is that God unravels perfectly through my life. In this situation or any situation, small or large, there is no big or small to the mind that maketh all. So if we can have a new understanding of this concept, and so it is, we would stop playing the game with our minds that I know many of us get caught into, which is, and so it is, or is it? And we'd stop leaving room for uncertainty, the kind that makes us crazy, and start embracing the uncertainty, the kind that could make us step back far enough to actually become who we are. We need to get rid of the question mark. We need to get rid of the question mark. We need to spend so much time in our minds knowing the truth, as Patrick said, that there's just no room for any more lies. There's just no room for the other stuff. We need to stop justifying our lives based on what happens in our lives. So when I ask you, are you done justifying things? The only answer to that is yes. And then the, answer, the question is, how do I stop justifying? We stop paying so much attention on what's going on in our life and start paying more attention on who's going on in our life. Who am I? Who's the real me? Am I really this person over here dealing with this issue? No, I'm not. I'm behind it, watching it, and getting a better perspective of it. And it can happen any moment of any day. I have done it everywhere I've been this week. I do not like going shopping on Black Friday. Does anybody enjoy that? My husband. You see the only hand that went up? So, so this Black Friday, he said to me, he said, you know, every, every year on Black Friday, for the last five years, I've been by myself and I've done what I've wanted to do. He said, and I always go shopping. I said, then let's go shopping. And in the back of my mind was, because I know how to remove myself from everything now. And I did. We went to these stores. People were crazy. They're running around. And, and I just literally, every moment I just stopped and I went, and we stepped back. <laughs> and I remembered where I was. And I remembered who I was. So when I asked you, where are you? That's why I asked you. So I could get to this point in the talk and tell you every single moment of every single day, you are in heaven. 
That's the absolute truth. There is no such thing as any other place. It's a lie. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what's going on, if you step back far enough, remember who you are, you are in heaven. And you are God ruling over heaven. And it is your authority that decides how your life is going to unravel. But what I know is that God's life unravels perfectly. Therefore, my life unravels perfectly. My life is always, always, always coming forth out of pure perfection. That's the truth of who we are. That's what we get to do. That's what we get to know. That's who we get to be. And so it is, period. Yes. You never need again to ask yourself, or is it? There's no such thing, or is it? It's not is it, it's it is. That's backwards. Is it is backwards from it is. I just realized that. I say, and so it is not, and so is it. See, think about how powerful that feels. And so is it. And so it is needs a period at the end of it. We need to let go of our question marks. We need to rethink this teaching and stop playing games with trying to demonstrate all the things in our lives and realize we are not the things in our lives. We are the thinker, not the thought. We are the belief, not we are the believer, not the belief. We are the truth, not the facts. That's the truth. And so it is. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.